Hello, I am Reina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f Tonight I am painting with the Oracle. This is the first installment of my new series, Oracle Pours, where I am doing paintings inspired on a card drawn from an Oracle deck. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell, Reina? Granted, I am a tarot card reader, but oracle cards can be a little bit more friendly when it comes to <laughs> inspiring paintings. Uh, they're also maybe a little bit more accessible to most people who don't spend crazy amounts of time learning how to read tarot, which I've done. It's great. I love it. And I'll probably do something with that along the lines, but we're just going to start with oracle cards right now. <laughs> so since it is Halloween season, it's October. I am working with the Halloween Oracle that is by Stacy DeMarco. You can find it on Amazon or hopefully you have a local shop that sells it so you can support small local businesses. Local businesses are more important. We need to be kept in business too. I have to admit these cards are huge and super awkward to shuffle. I have tiny hands and I'm really bad at shuffling to begin with. The Skull of Light, also known as the Illumination card, as the famous psychotherapist Jung suggested, knowing our own darkness helps us cope with the darkness of others. Taking the time to know thyself and to seek understanding of our more destructive or shadow natures can lead to huge happiness and less anxiety. <laughs> I'll take less anxiety. That'd be great. The idea of being shown the way in the most difficult of times and always knowing that we are never alone in the darkness are the keys to this magical element. Light is usually a comforting thing, yet sometimes we really do not want to see the boogeyman under the bed. Is it boogie or bogey? I've always wondered that. It is too scary, too big, and we know not how to defeat it. Yet by simply shining the torch upon such darkness, the victory is ours. Should the skull of light enter your life, know that it is time to open yourself fully to the clarity of bright illumination. Brighter than the lights in my studio, I guess. <laughs> Allow yourself to be seen. Hi. To see, I can't see you, and to act upon what is shown to you. The time has passed for hiding, for pretending, and for swallowing our discomfort by accepting the status quo when it really doesn't suit us. Speaking of status quo, did you know quo is not a word that you can legally use playing Scrabble? Found that out the hard way, got my kicked. Anyway, shadow work, all that good stuff. This is a good time of year for delving into that. And it's kind of fun to muse about while you are painting. And please enjoy what I painted for you based on the skull of light. The skull of light. The skull of light. There's a little derp moment for you. Here are all the colors I selected. There's a ton of them. Several of them are pigments, most are paints. I'll try to tell you what they are, but some of them are Frankenstein. Like I mixed them with several other things as time has gone on and I've had to uh, reanimate them. We'll go with reanimate. I've had to reanimate them with, ooh shit, with polycrylic. And that's just to make them nice and liquidy again. Okay, so this color, well the first one, that black, that's actually Metallic Black by Artist Loft. This color here is Blue Russet, that is a pigment by Jacquard Pearl X. And you'll see I'm somewhat trying to imitate <laughs> the image on the card. Okay, I used two golds. This first gold is Solar Gold, this is another Jacquard Pearl X pigment. I'm making some spooky eyes, and there's the outline of the spooky skull. And it's actually kind of fun to paint this way, and I might, I might try some more uh, abstracted, but not so abstract pieces of art like this. Just, it's just really fun. Obviously, without the pillow, because you'll see it just like spreads out like a big gooey pancake of skull. <laughs> Big gooey pancake of skull. All right, that right there, that is interference gold. Another pigment, Jacquard Prolex. I got like, they have three kits of 
I don't know, little vials. Maybe there's like 16 in a box or something. And I, they have three series. I got all three. I went a little hog wild there. Okay, back to the blue russet for some, for some accents. Honestly, that right there looks about as cool as it ever looks. <laughs> the end result is cool and looks... Well, you'll see it, but that right there, I like that. I could, I could work with that. It's kind of like a creepy alien skull. Me and creepy alien skulls. Maybe Indiana Jones will pick me up and we can go search for it in the jungle. Purple. Okay, I'm not going to lie. There's at least four, sh sh blah, blah, four shades of purple. That first one is probably Artist Loft Metallic Purple because it's the deepest. And everything, almost everything I use has some sort of shimmer in it. So we'll just figure it's that. This medium tone, this is, uh, let's see if it's written on the side of the cup. That's not the right one. Uh, I have no idea what it is. It's a Frankenstein paint. Couldn't possibly tell you what's in there. I looked at it and I gave up. This is a peach that I made, which is Artist Loft Metallic Orange, like one and to four, four being Artist Loft Metallic White. Why is it so hard to explain a ratio? Four to one, white to orange. Made kind of a nice metallic peach color. I'm starting to get jumbly now. It's really starting to look like a pancake. Okay, pink. This is uh, the iridescent, I think it's actually called Blue Red, but it's pink by Pebio. Pebio. It's really pretty though. The iridescent like kicks it. It looks hot. And then also a very similar pink that I'm using is Flamingo Pink. That is a Jacquard Pearl Axe pigment. This is Pumpkin Orange, another pigment, Jacquard Pearl X, which if you've been watching any of my Halloween themed videos, I have been using this particular pigment quite a lot because the shimmer is awesome and it works really nicely with the really vivid Artist Lock Orange underneath it. It's an orange parade! I hope none of the people out there watching this are like psychologists. Uh, this, um, what's this one called? You know, actually I think that that's the flamingo pink and the one I used before that was another one of my Frankenstein paints that is Artist Loft. And uh, it's, aha, look, I even wrote the recipe. It is two parts, parts being milliliters here, two parts neon pink, four parts metallic white. Yeah, it's, it's this disgustingly, like, both alluring and repelling metallic Pepto bubblegum color. It's like day glow. I hate it and I love it at the same time. I kind of want to eat it. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Oh, in fact, perfect timing. That's what I'm putting on there right now. <sighs> Amazing what happens. Synchronicities abound. My skull pancake is really starting to look like roadkill. But the important part's having fun, right? Yeah. Now I know something you want to try. I think I just hit a wall. It's 10.45 at night and I just ran out of smart ass comments. I was gonna bake cookies, but resining my last batch of tiles took so long that <laughs> I'm way too tired for that now. 
because I was gonna make cookies that are apples like Granny Smith and oatmeal because I have a bunch of Granny Smith apples and it's like a lot of chopping and I'm all like mm -mm. I'll chop my finger right off I'm so tired so instead here we are contemplating our navels and pancake skulls some nice little teeth for effect some more sphincter pink I'm just gonna call that <laughs> god I don't know I don't know what color that is ooh cool huh look at how well they go together it's amazing anyway here comes the cell activator this is haha another instance where I wrote down the recipe amazing this is Australian Floetrol and Golden Carbon Black 4 to 1 ratio. It works pretty well. I got out here the world's smallest blower, which is a little on the overkill side, and it blew a little bit of the pillow paint up to the top, which is not quite what I'm going for. However, uh, the end result was, it was fine. You know, if I were to do this exact same thing again, I would have tinted my base paint to be kind of the yellowish gold um, like kind of this color so that's what would have shown through but I didn't I know for next time not that I'm probably ever gonna paint this exact cardigan but you know you never really know cardigan cardigan I do like to wear cardigans it's getting to that time of year I'm a little cold okay here's where I completely fuck everything up with the toothpick or popsicle stick and this is sped up to about eight times you know <laughs> if I could could fuck up things this fast believe me I would it's like a bubblegum roadkill disaster I know we got into the fun part tilting I didn't feel like spinning this one this was definitely a tilt I can look at them it's kind of like looking at a card in the deck and knowing what it wants me to say. It's really not like that. But I can tell that something's going to look better spun or it's going to look better tilted. And this was a clear tilt. So again, sped up to like eight times because it's really, really boring to just watch the paint slowly across the canvas. And fun fact, here I am scraping off all of the drips with the palette knife because there was a lot of paint that slid off. And this just makes it so much easier when you're done varnishing and everything to like peel the paint off the back and you have a nice smooth back on which to place your backing or you have a nice clean back if that's the look you go for. I paint mine all black, surprise surprise, and then put a really nice piece of backing black paper. This is what it looked like wet. Uh, trying to show you here all of the beautiful gold that's popping up and the different pigments, the little flakes. Not a ton of the pigments are showing right now as it's dry, but the gold really stands out, particularly the second gold that I glossed right over. Get it? Anyway, the second gold that I glossed right over is the Deco Art 24 Karat Gold, and that really, really popped up dry. Now, I can't wait to see what this is going to look like varnished. I may even attempt to resin this one. It's an 8x8 canvas. I haven't resined a canvas yet. And uh, as much as I absolutely detest resin, it looks really beautiful. <laughs> it's kind of a love-hate relationship, kind of like Pepto Pink paint. I plan on doing a few more of these Oracle-inspired paintings over time. I hope you like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. We. Me. I will see you next time. There's not more than one of me, I promise. Mm -hmm.